The Soybean School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Pride Seeds, Safina Insecticide, and Cruiser Max Vibrance Beans. Welcome to Real Agriculture. I'm Bernard Tobin. Today I am joined by Mike Cobra, Maffer's weed specialist. Mike, how's it going? I'm, I'm I can't complain, Bernard. It's nice to see your face. Hey, I uh, we're not out in a field today. No. Uh, hopefully, uh, we'll get out there soon. We do a lot of these, but um, mm-hmm. you know, it's a, it's a great way to connect and, and get some information out for farmers. Um, I had Jake Monroe, um, your colleague from Omafra, on a couple of weeks ago, and we mm-hmm. were talking about planting soybeans into cereal rye. And I want to talk to you a little bit about cereal rye because, you know, there seems to be more and more evidence that it can play a key role in um, controlling a weed like Canada flea bean. Um, tell us about some of the research you've been doing. Yeah, we kind of stumbled upon it accidentally, uh, Bernard, because uh, I think it was 2015, Clarence Swanton, Francois Tardif, and myself, uh, we had a, a tillage and herbicide trial uh, in the fall. And uh, at one of our farm cooperator sites, they accidentally planted cereal rye into about half of our, our plots. And that turned out to be a nice blessing in disguise, because the next year, anywhere where that cereal rye was, um, uh, regardless of tillage treatment, herbicide treatment, there was just less flea bane. So that kind of spawned uh, a graduate student project to look at, at that more in depth, uh, the combination of tillage and cereal rye and herbicides and its impact on glyphosate-resistant Canada flea bane. Now that was some work um, done by uh, Ted Vanny. And uh, yep. uh, 2018, 2019 results, really incredible. I just, I'm just going to go through these for a second and turn you mm-hmm. loose on them. But in mm-hmm. 2018, cereal rye reduced biomass of Canada flea bane by 96%. And in mm-hmm. 2019, reduced biomass by 94%. That's pretty incredible. Tell us about, uh, I guess, uh, Ted's work and, and, and how this unfolded. Yeah, and what's more incredible about this, like if we can contrast that to what Jake was talking about, where you're growing like a fairly high density of cereal rye, you're crimping it and planting into it, that rye is actually serving a physical barrier. So that's kind of traditional plant competition. But we're talking about cereal rye at 50, 60 pounds an acre seeded the previous fall. So it's it's pretty sparse. And Ted's work, you know, when he looked at um, the light reaching the soil surface, uh, the presence or absence of cereal rye didn't affect light hitting the soil. So that gives you evidence that it's not plant competition that's causing the weeds to either not emerge or, or be smaller. Uh, it's allelopathy. So that's, you know, the, uh, the release of biochemicals from uh, cereal rye. And so that's something that's been looked at in the past. But Ted wanted to see if that was the cause against Canada fleabane. So, so he, you know, again, those biomass density reductions were quite quite strong um, he went into the the lab and said okay uh, we know that cereal rye produces these biochemical compounds and and the most prominent one that has activity on weeds is called BOA is like kind of the abbreviation so he went and took um, a Canada flea bean seed and lettuce seed because we know lettuce is super sensitive to these compounds and he uh, took a, a growing medium called agar. So, you know, we'll put a picture up uh, for, for the viewers to look at. And, and basically, he took uh, petri dishes with an agar medium, and then you can impregnate the chemical into that medium. So it's kind of like, it's like a clear jello-like substance. It's kind of like if anyone's familiar with jello shots, you know, that's effectively what you're doing. You're adding something potent to it, and then you're trying to grow seeds up. And so um, he found in lettuce, for example, uh, when it was grown with in the absence of BOA, so the biochemical from rye, per- grew perfectly well. And then as you started to increase the rate of BOA, uh, you saw reductions in shoot and root growth. And he was able to see that very much in flea bane as well. So the biochemical release from cereal rye caused uh, a reduction in flea bane growth um, so quite significantly. Mm. Hey, what's interesting here is, um, you know, I've had Rob Miller from BASF on here, you know, mm-hmm. um, Tom Wolf, and everybody talks about those multiple modes of action and adding mm-hmm. more modes of action to the tank. Could cereal rye be another mode of action? Uh, absolutely. Like, uh, effectively, the plant, uh, the cover crop plant itself, is 
is more or less spraying a herbicide, if you think about it, but it's doing it from its roots uh, effectively. And so the, the key there to figure out is, well, you know, what, what weed species are sensitive to it? Um, you know, is there a certain cultivars that release more? Is there certain field conditions that release more? Is there a time of year that releases more? And I think, I think we got lucky in terms of the release of chemical compounds from the rye plant probably coincided nicely with the life cycle of fleabane. And so so that's why we saw um, consistent results over the past two years. And quite frankly, growers in the past, even, even as we were starting this project, shared similar concepts. And so I want to be careful, Byrne, because it's, you know, you said uh, 96% reduction in bio, biomass, 94% reduction in biomass, and that sounds impressive. Mm -hmm. Keep in mind, though, that we sometimes run into fleabane populations of like 4 million plants per mm -hmm. acre. So when you're left with four to six percent of four million, wow. that's still a lot that still needs to be managed. But kind of the icing on the cake with the cereal rye was that uh, it reduced the size of those fleabane plants by anywhere from, I think it was 60 to 80 percent. So now we're dealing with smaller plants and then, you know, those effective herbicides can can do their job so yeah uh, cereal rye with an effective herbicide you know that's more or less like a, a perfect tank mix really if you think about it hey and a big part of this is getting that cereal rye down and established a lot of it's after a late corn crop that's coming off you know um you see growers being innovative and coming up with ideas again to get that uh, that cereal rye down and established in front of the soybeans yeah, so let's let's look at it from a cropping system standpoint. I think this cereal rye has probably the most benefit if it, before you're going to grow soybeans or say dry beans, right? So to do that, you're most often trying to establish it in corn, and so the the bottleneck is you know when do you get corn off the field? It's pretty tough to frost seed cereal rye. Uh, in December. Some people do it, but it's pretty rare, right? Um, so there's been innovative farmers. Warren Schneckenberger is one that I can think of that that is uh, going in with his high clearance sprayer and, and spreading that rye seed, you know, as the leaves are senescing in September, October, and then getting that nice stand for the next spring where that cereal rye can do its job. So uh, if the value is there, farmers will figure it out. They've proven that time and time again. Yeah. Well, hey, Mike, uh, some great research uh, from your team and the University of Guelph group, and uh, mm -hmm. thanks for sharing it. And as I say, I think we're going to see a lot more cereal rye and, and, and guys trying to figure out where, where it fits and how to make it work. Yeah, I hope so. I mean, it's the first time we've been really excited about a cover crop from a weed control perspective. Good stuff, sir. Thank you so much. Yep. Take care.